Hey, good morning or afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome back to our continuing series, Mastering RMM. Today, uh, we have CJ back uh, for the second of, uh, of our week session on uh, uh, policies and dynamic policies and packages. Uh, just one quick announcement, and then I'll turn it over to CJ, uh, is the, just a reminder that tomorrow we have our, uh, our webinar version. and our webinar, we do a much deeper dive into troubleshooting and Q&A. Uh, please feel free to ask questions during the, the stream today. And if we can't get to them, we'll, we'll talk about them tomorrow. But uh, uh, sign up tomorrow will be a good half of the, the uh, episode tomorrow is really going to be focused on Q&A. Also, uh, because of the technical issues we had last week, uh, we will be uh, definitely opening to, to answer questions about uh, agents and agent deployment, uh, as well as well, really anything. Uh, we'll be able to, to answer anything. But the, the big focus areas for tomorrow are, are policies and agent. So with that, I'll stop talking, uh, CJ. Uh, excited to, to learn about the pros and cons of dynamic groups versus uh, policy groups. Fantastic. Well, then, thank you very much for the intro, Jason. Now, as you mentioned, today we're going to be talking about policies and device groups. Uh, we'll be going into a deep dive on this, but before we get into that, I want to give a few reminders for anyone who may not have seen yesterday's webinar. So why are we really talking about policies? Again, these are all intended to help reduce the redundant data entry whenever you're sending out values for individual uh, devices within ConnectWise RMM's hierarchy. Whenever you're managing 10 devices, updating settings for 10 devices, it's really not that problem, not that big of an issue. But whenever you're trying to manage hundreds or even thousands of devices, trying to make those individual changes can be problematic. And we wanted to make sure that we had a way to be able to give you a method to cascade those items and those settings for any of the values that we have within the system to be able to get them customized on a, a more global basis or more granular basis as needed. Now, in yesterday's session, we spent a lot of time talking about the hierarchy and how whenever you're looking at individual devices, you're going to see some terminology, but I wanted to give you a little context on that. Whenever we talk about global policies or you see something that says global whenever you're looking at an individual device, what that means? as there was a policy provided by ConnectWise that is invisible to you. You can't see it. It's all defined by us to make sure that some of these items are not automatically turned on. We want it to be an opt-in experience whenever you're working with uh, the different features and functions of our tools so that you have control over whether those items are actually enabled for your clients or not. The next layer down is a default policy. Now, default policies and the, the packages that they are contained within, along with the packages for assignments to sites, we covered that yesterday. If you have not had a chance to watch it, definitely encourage you to watch uh, that video. Very short, you know, quick, concise, to the point. But today, we are going to focus more on the groups and overrides. These are your lowest level of granularity, and these items do not require packages. In fact, for overrides, you don't even need a policy. But uh, we will get into that in more detail as we go through. Now, a couple of things that I want to make sure everyone is aware of. Whenever you are working with policy groups, it can take up to 10 minutes for updates to actually reflect on your devices. The reason for that is because we actually have something running in the background within uh, the ACO platform to recalculate and cascade out the membership of those uh, groups whenever you're adding them to the system because real-time changes can be problematic to pass through the system on an extremely timely basis. And also we wanna make sure that an accidental change doesn't immediately trigger removal of something. So those safeguards are put in place both for you know, scalability purposes and also for your protection. So it will take up to 10 minutes for those changes to be reflected on individual devices. In addition, as we're going through this, you're gonna see there's a, even a hierarchy whenever we're building out these policy groups. Now, in my example today, it's gonna to be very simple, very straightforward. I'm only gonna have one policy group with each of these different types that we're gonna discuss, but in your environment, you're likely to have more. And a device can be a part of multiple policy groups for each type. When that happens, if a device is a part of multiple policy groups, just know the top group wins. It's the highest priority, the highest in the list. The first device that that, uh, the first group that that device joins, 
that's the one that's going to be a part of. So if you want to get more granular, just make sure you go further down into the list. So as you're expanding out, it will continue to cascade down. But if it's just a static row of one, two, and three, all at the same level, top one wins. Now, same as we did yesterday, I'm giving you some step-by-step -step instructions on how to do these things, and then we'll transition into a demo afterwards. But to be able to use policy groups, very simple. Start by making some policies. You can do that by going to settings and then policies, and you can create a policy for each of the different types that we've discussed in previous sessions. Once you have done that, you'll then go into settings and packages. And within packages, there's going to be a special tab for policy groups. Simply add a group for the particular policy type that you're wanting to interact with. And give it a name, select the policy that you want to assign, and select the desired uh, dynamic group if you're adding an existing dynamic group or to find your criteria for a, uh, a policy group. Now, the differences between a policy group and a dynamic using an existing dynamic group. We're going to talk about that in just a second. But once you've defined the membership for that policy group, click Save, and then wait. Within about 10 minutes, you will see that those policies have been assigned to those devices. And it gives you a, a nice way to be able to ensure that while your packages are containing your, your standard offerings for all, all of your customers, and the site level policies and packages are giving you the option to be able to define what are you doing for things outside of the norm? We talked about time and material customers yesterday. Well, now we're going to be getting into some examples where you may be doing things for a broad set of customers, but it's not based on the type of customer. Instead, it's more about the individual devices themselves. And as you're getting more granular, we want to give you that flexibility here. So before we actually show what this looks like, I want to give you a little uh, information about why you may want to use policy groups or dynamic groups whenever you're working with policies, because you'll see these two options whenever we go in to create it. Now, if you're using a policy group, one of the nice things about it is that it is self-contained. Now, what that means is it's going to be a little less flexible, but you're also less likely to run into unintended changes, because with a dynamic group, it is used by multiple areas. And that gives you a great level of flexibility. But with that flexibility, there's also the possibility that someone in your organization may make a change to the criteria used to define that dynamic group. And if that dynamic group is being used to assign policies, if they change that criteria, suddenly that policy is going to be assigned to devices that you may not have intended to. So while it's very flexible, you can also have a little more risk of unintended changes while using dynamic groups. And in addition to that, you also have the shared permissions with dynamic groups, and policy groups have their own individual permissions. So it gives it a little more security. But again, it all depends on how your organization is structured and what makes sense for you. If you don't have a ton of people making changes, and you know the people who are making those changes, and you work with them on a day-to-day -day basis, using existing dynamic groups is totally fine. So with that, we're going to transition over into the demo section. And let's bring that screen up. Well, where is that screen? Here. There we go. All right. So in this example, we are looking at an individual device. Now, for this particular device, all I have to do is click into it. I'll take this one. And I've created a few custom fields for examples, but we're going to use an example here today. But once you go to an individual device, as mentioned yesterday, if you go to settings, you're able to see all the policies and where they came from. So I mentioned earlier this third-party patching. This is a global policy. This is one provided by ConnectWise to ensure the third-party patching isn't turned on by default for all of your customers. But we did create a default package with policies in it yesterday, and those are identified as partner. And I also have a couple of groups already pre-populated. Now, these groups for today's example, I am using custom fields. Now, I've already created these custom fields. A couple of them are at the uh, company level, so that I can turn on web root integration for an individual customer just by checking that box. I also have an option for PSA enabled, which is adding a different type of communicator. Um, 
communicator policy. That way the client is able to make some tickets and have it sync over to the PSA. But I only want to turn on the communicator if I know those tickets are going to flow through. And for this example today, we're actually going to talk a little bit about OS server patching. Now for OS server patching, you may have a, a different schedule that you're using for your desktops and servers. And if you're not, I would strongly recommend that you have a different schedule for your servers versus your desktops. But outside of that, there are also cases where you may have uh, clients that have multiple servers serving a, a, the same role, a primary and a secondary server. And for this example, I've actually created a custom field for secondary servers so that I can go through and say, this particular device is a secondary server, and I can ensure that it does not get patched on the same day and time as the other servers. Now, with this particular item, I've identified the device. I've already created that custom field. Now I have the, uh, the custom field updated on a device that is a secondary server. So what I'm going to do now is I will come over to policies and packages. We'll take a look at the policy itself. So again, settings, policies, and you'll see that I've created a secondary server patching. It has all of my updates. Scheduled time, we're gonna do this weekly on Sunday between midnight and four for the installs and four to six for the reboots. Now, beyond that, we're gonna come back over to the packages and I wanna get that policy assigned to only the devices that are identified as a secondary server. So to be able to do that, I'll select policy groups. I'll go over to OS patching server and I'm going to add a new group. Oh, by the way, add a group is adding a policy group, add existing uh, device group, that's doing the dynamic groups. You can choose either one, uh, and it goes back to the previous discussion about when would you use a policy group versus a dynamic group. Either one is fine, but for this example, I'm going to add a new group. That way you can actually see what the criteria look like. So I will call this secondary servers. I'm going to select the policy for secondary server patching. And because I have that custom field, I can simply search for secondary server equals true. We'll see that there is one device here. Now, once I save this, now I wait. And within a few moments, you know, upwards of 10 minutes, <laughs> I will see that this particular device, whenever I look at the settings, Actually, it came through almost immediately from this case. So the OS patching for server has now been updated from the partner level policy to the individual group, and we can see those settings have now been applied. Now, that is the way to use uh, policy groups. You can do this across any customers. I typically use custom fields. That way it's easier for me to be able to track those. But you can also use any of your groups. So if you have static groups that you've manually added devices to, that's fine as well. Now, I also talked about overrides. So for this particular example, we're actually going to change something. I know we just added this policy to the, uh, to the device, but I want to be able to use the same device to show what the overrides look like. So as soon as I click Edit, I'm going to come through and we're going to change something. Uh, let's just say Always Reboot This Endpoint. I will save this, and just by making that one change, you will see that this is now identified as a device level source. There's overrides here. And if I scroll through, I'll be able to see where the override is. So this particular setting has been overridden. Now, what is nice about this is once you have an individual device that is no longer following a policy because you've made an override, whenever you are looking at your sites, we're also gonna tell you how many overrides you have. So if I have more than one device here, this will actually change from the device name to a number. So we're going to go through and we're going to do an override on another device. I'll just pick one of these. We'll override something. It really doesn't matter what we're making the override for, but I want to give you that visual illustration. So we will update this group for communicator, edit this, we'll turn communicator off, save it. Now we have that device level override. And if I reload this, 
we'll see that now are, there are now two devices with overrides. And if I select them, I can see these are the devices, and I can go straight to those devices to see what specific overrides are in place. And once you've made an override to a device, if you decide that you no longer want to have that override for whatever reason, you can always click Remove Overrides, and it will return it back to the control of the policy that was previously in place. So just a couple little tips and tricks whenever it comes to using policy groups and overrides and making those exceptions. Fairly easy to be able to place through, but it does require thinking through the offerings that you have how you want them to be structured, and what settings you want to be put in place. Uh, typically, I recommend going through uh, your service offerings and identifying what differences you have between uh, the standards for individual clients. Again, yesterday it was time and materials. Today, it's using an example where we want to patch something differently because it's a secondary server, and I know I'm doing that on a regular basis. I've told all, all my customers I do secondary servers on Sundays, I do primary servers, typically on the second Saturday of the month. But that is what we have for today as far as demo goes. Now, for any additional information, I definitely recommend going to the university documentation. Feel free to scan the QR code here, and it'll take you right to the docs. Uh, you can click around, look at any of the additional detail, and you'll see uh, a lot of additional context that's going to help with you know, providing clarity around what we discussed today and giving a few more examples. With that, I'll turn it over to any questions that may have popped up during this session. And also, I'm going to give a reminder for you know, going back to what Jason mentioned earlier. We do have a session tomorrow where we will be talking about troubleshooting and additional tips and tricks when it comes to policies. And also, we'll be talking about agent deployment. That's going to be more of a Q&A session. This is a longer form that we have on Thursdays, but please feel free to join us. Do we have any questions? Here's no. So with that, I will simply say thank you very much, everyone, for joining today. It was a pleasure to spend time with you, and we'll see you tomorrow.